This is something that I've been passionate about for the last several years. And it's the old adage that in order to understand peace, you have to go to war. So 20 years treating cancer and seeing the ravage that does to the system that is the human body, we brought all that back to model general health. And I'm going to tell you some of the tenets going forward in proposing a new model for health and technology, how that fits in and how it brings hope to the feeling of health. Let me tell you that this is a terrific book. It really is. It's a New York Times bestseller. It's called The End of Illness, and it promises that you can live to be 100 years old. Dr. Agus, thank you. So, so what is it that you are saying that we should do about sleeping, about eating? What's, what's your so the medicine? data are wild. If you have your lunch today at noon and yeah. tomorrow at 2 o'clock, for two hours, your body has stress hormones go up and it starts to shut down a little to preserve energy. Your metabolism goes down so you can gain weight. Your cognitive function goes down about 25, 30%, and exercise performance goes down. The body strives for regularity, getting up the same time, eating the same time. I don't care if you have two meals a day or five, it's the regularity part. Again, I'm one of those guilty doctors who didn't practice prevention. And, you know, I think our field always practices on what we want to treat today, and we forget about tomorrow. Well, healthcare in the United States is 16.5% of GDP, and it's growing. Unless we focus on preventing, we're in trouble. We're the number one spender in health in the world, and we're ranked 32nd. So what am I missing? We're doing something wrong. You know, originally, we titled the book, What is Health? And then I received an email from Steve Jobs. And Steve said, when you put health in the title of anything, it makes me feel like I'm eating Brussels sprouts, <laughs> which is classic Steve. And Steve actually helped came up with the title The End of Illness, which I believe in, is declarative, is aggressive. But it's this notion of the Brussels sprouts, I think, which scares me and scares everybody. And so the notion of health, that there are certain things that are good and bad, that there's this binary function, yes, no, I think some of which I'll try to disprove you today. I will tell you, being on the front lines of cancer, that we're not very good at treating it. And every week, I unfortunately lose patients to this horrible disease. So the way to treat cancer is avoid it. And the, the paradox here is that if you make people live till their 90s, you probably will reduce health care costs. If you look at all of the data, when people are in their 90s, they don't go on a ventilator at the end of life. They don't spend weeks to months in an intensive care unit. They die with dignity from whatever process ails them at that point. In fact, something I learned actually last week is 1951 was the last year you could put old age on a death certificate. The notion of lowering health care costs is key. You know, I mentioned this. I was in Abu Dhabi last week at the World Economic Forum meeting, and I, I showed some of this data. And one of the health ministers um, from uh, one of the European countries came up and said, David, you can't do this. It's going to bankrupt the world. I go, what do you mean? He goes, pensions are built so that a certain number of people die in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. And if you make people live longer, you're going to screw up the world pension systems. <laughs> well, what's next? So there are tenfold more bacteria and viruses in each of us than cells in the human body. So they control how we metabolize our food. They control our hormone levels. They control how our complex system works. Well, for the first time, we have the technology to actually look at them, quantify them, and probably manipulate them over the next several years. In fact, if you look at incidence of breast cancer and prostate cancer in China, it's about a tenth of what ours is. After a decade of moving here, theirs starts to approach ours. We always said it's the freaking Burger King and McDonald's. It turns out it's not. It's the microbiome. It's how we metabolize the food that we eat that does that. And so this is where things are going to go forward, is we're going to start to understand this complex system and control this complex system. 